Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. We greatly appreciate your feedback as always. And before we get started in this video, we would like to give a shout to all the people that always showed us love on our channel and give us positive feedback despite even if we make some of our own mistakes. So let's just give a moment in time, show our contributions to those who send us love. We really thank you and here's your shout out. All right, now let's get started with this video. In this video, here is a true crime story about Nicodemo, Little Nicky Scarfo's freelance killing in a diner. Here we are in the heart of South Philadelphia at 302 Oregon Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As you know, especially in the digital age where restaurants and certain food chains are slowly decaying and depreciating. However, we do want to give our service to the Oregon Diner. It's still a beautiful restaurant. However, we do have to be truthful about certain historical events that have taken place here. On May 25th, 1963, a horrific event happened here in the South Philadelphia Oregon Diner. One day, little Nicky Scarfo, along with his peers, Salvatore Chucky Merlino and Louis Matteo had accompanied him at the Oregon Diner to have breakfast. When the entourage had arrived at the diner, they bumped into a longshoreman named William Dugan and is depicted in Philip Leonetti's Mafia Prince as a big Irish guy. That's how they describe his physique and description. There is no pictures of William F. Dugan. However, we'll do the best we can based on some news reports so you can get a background image of this character. When William F. Dugan and Nicky Scarfo had encountered each other, they both have a dispute over the seating area around the seating booth. Both men had gotten to a heated argument about who should sit where and who was there first. Now, according to Philip Leonetti's Mafia Prince, William F. Dugan had made the first move and unfortunately it would be his fatal mistake. William F. Dugan had placed his hands around Nicky Scarfo's neck and pushing him into the counter, grappling and holding little Nicky Scarfo under so much pressure to the point where Nicky Scarfo almost passed out. Nicky Scarfo had defended himself and picked up a butter knife on the counter and stabbed William Dugan across the chest, specifically hitting him right across the heart. William F. Dugan had collapsed and unfortunately had to succumb to his injuries and died that very same day. We will be showing you pictures of Salvatore Chucky Merlino, Nicky Scarfo, and Louis Matteo as you can see in this article from Temple University. Here is from Temple University Digital Archives. You see it says Salvatore Merlino arrives at police station after being arrested on murder charges. So right here it is labeled that Salvatore Merlino arrives at police station after being arrested for murder charges. This dates back in the archives on June 3rd, 1963. So in the description it says arriving at 11th and Wharton Street police stations for booking in a May 25th stabbing in a diner at 3rd Street and Oregon Avenue. From love, Salvatore Molino, Nicholas Scarfo, and Luis Mateo, all of South Philadelphia, the three men were arrested for the murder of William F. Dugan, 24, who lived at 350 Tree Street. And here is a label of all three of these characters' names. This is the residency of William F. Dugan at 350 and Tree Street of what it looks like today. So this photo was taken place at 11th and Wharton Street. That at the time was a police station as you see in the description. Now in today's day and age in 2023 at the time of this recording, this is what the police station looks like. So as you see across, it says 11th and Wharton Street. However, it is now considered a municipal building and for security reasons, obviously we cannot film in that area, but we can show you from a screenshot to where it is. It does held as the third and fourth 
police district and is a municipal building across the screen. This building is where Nikki Scarfo, Salvatore Chucky Merlino, and Luis Mateo were held after the arrest for the murder of William F. Dugan. Before we read the Philadelphia Daily News and the Philadelphia Inquirer about the stabbing, we first like to show you the news archive from the Pride Tide News Television where Philip Leonetti also describes the description and you'll hear from his actual voice from the primetime interview on 6ABC. By the way, he is also in disguise, so this is not his natural look. He is covered in makeup, as they said in the beginning of the video, but we'll just get straight to the point to where they go over the fatal stabbing of William Dugan. In fact, Scarfo's reputation for violence was too much even for his own boss, Angelo Bruno, who ran the Philadelphia mob back then. Bruno decided that he'd had enough after Nicky stopped by the Oregon diner one night and killed some guy with a butter knife. Your uncle did a freelance killing with a butter knife? Yeah, he got in a fight with a guy in a diner, and the guy's choking him, and he's reaching, he, he grabs a butter knife, and he sticks it in the guy, and it hits his heart, and the guy dies. Now we'll be reading for the Philadelphia Daily News. As you can see, it says homicide suspects Louis Matteo, Nicky Scarfo, are led from the police wagon into 11th and Wharton Street Police Station. This is Matteo and Nicky Scarfo. Three men give up in slaying a diner. Three South Philadelphia men were held without bail today in connection with the failed stabbing May 25th. Held at hearing from homicide charges at the 11th and Wharton Street, police stations were Luis Matteo, 30, of Darien Street, near Wolf, Salvatore Molino, 23, of Jackson Street, near 9th, and Nicholas Scarfo, 34, of Wharton Street, near 13th Street. And this is Salvatore Molino, held without bail. All three refused any comments at the arrest on the death of William F. Dugan, 24, of 350 Tree Street on the advisor of attorney David N. Savitt. Detectives James Lee of the Homicide Unit and Harry Gwen of South Detective Divisions linked the trio with the murder after a week's quizzing of some 50 persons who were inside the Oregon Diner, Oregon Avenue near 3rd, where Dugan was fatally stabbed during a fight. The fight broke out, said Lee and Gwen, when Dugan left one booth in the diner to talk to a friend in another booth, then returned to find the three defendants sitting in the first booth. All four, said witness, began slugging each other with their fists after a heated exchange to sit in the booth. In the melee, Dugan fell to the floor, fatally stabbed, and the trio ran out to the car and sped away. It was until last Sunday that Lee and Gwen published the identity of the three men who had battered with Dugan. Mateo, also known as the Chicago Louise, is a bartender. He once served in the Camden County Prison for carrying a concealed deadly weapon and was arrested 11 times on gambling. Scarfo, an unemployed maintenance worker, once was fined $75 and put on a year's probation after a gambling arrest. He also was arrested for assault and battery. Merlino, who is unemployed, has no previous police record. Dugan, the victim, had a record of six arrests, three on rape charges with no convictions. As you can see, all the parties were no angels. And this is a report from the Philadelphia Daily News on June 5th, 1963. Now we'll be heading to the Philadelphia Inquirer on the same day, June 5th, 1963. Three men are held for fatal stabbing. Three South Philadelphia men surrendered Tuesday at police headquarters at 8th and Ray Street in the fatal stabbing of William F. Dugan, 24 of Tree Street near 4th 
in a diner at 3rd Street and Oregon Avenue on May 25th. Surrendered by attorney David N. Savitt were Luis Mateo, alias Chicago Luis, 30th of Darien Street near Wolf Street, a bartender, Salvatore Merlino, 23 of Jackson Street near 10th and unemployed, and Nicholas Scarfo of Wharton Street near Broad Maintenance Worker. Police said the stabbing followed a dispute with between Dugan and the suspects over the occupancy of a diner booth. The three will have a hearing on homicide charges at the 11th of Wharton Street's police station on Wednesday. So that concludes both the articles of the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Philadelphia Daily News of those reports. After Nicky Scarfo was from jail, he enjoyed the fact that he took another man's life and had no regrets about it whatsoever. In fact, according to Philip Leonetti's Mafia Prince, Nicky Scarfo loved to charade and give a performance to how he demonstrated to how the guy had leaped and attacked him and the Nicky Scarfo ended up killing him with a butter knife. He loved to give demonstrations in front of his crew and audience and was delighted to take another man's life from him and he would love to set the president of it being another mark of another killing that he did when he was younger and the more to come when he becomes the leader of the Philadelphia criminal underworld. While many people in the Philadelphia crime members were happy for Nicky Scarfo's attack, his boss, the godfather Angelo Bruno, was not too happy. Due to Scarfo's reputation of being a notorious gangster and killer, it has been reported that Angelo Bruno had Nicky Scarfo banished to Atlantic City. However, some reports dispute this claim. In fact, according to Philip Leonetti on Patrick Bet David's interview on Value Entertainment, he said that it was not Angelo Bruno who banned Nicky Scarfo. He stated that Nicky Scarfo himself had chose to leave Philadelphia and go to Atlantic City, despite that it was a major bus since the city was not drawing any tourist attractions until 1979 when gambling became legalized. Once gambling became legalized and the mafia had control of the unions, casinos, and other different resources, therefore Scarfo was ready to become king once certain leaders were no longer in their place. Nicodemo Lil Nicky Scarfo pleaded guilty of manslaughter he was sentenced to 23 months in prison. However, he only served 10 months and was free to go and then continue his own killing sprees and will become the future boss of the Philadelphia crime family. This concludes the freelance killing of Nicky Scarfo at the Oregon Diner over 60 years ago. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.